Welcome back to the No Bullshit Guide to Java Spring Boot, Part 7. Today we cover unit testing. Unit testing is when you write code that tests other code. Tests are written in a given when then format, so given some prerequisite state, when the user acts upon something, then an outcome. You might also hear it called a range act assert, same thing. Here's an example, given a product exists, when user gets a product by ID, then return a product DTO. Before we cover what we do unit test, let's cover what we don't unit test. We don't unit test things that are built into Spring. These are already highly tested. So annotations like at service or at rest controller, we do not unit test. Controller endpoints, we do not unit test. The save method from JPA, we do not unit test. In fact, we don't interact with the database at all when we do unit testing. For example, as a junior developer, I thought that I would unit test saving an object and then checking in the database that it was saved. We do not do this. And the reason is we're going to run these unit tests thousands of times, which means that the database will get flooded with entries that we'll have to delete and manage. Here's what we do unit test. Any code that we wrote, so a DTO constructor, service logic, validators, basically any branching of code that we wrote, we're going to unit test. Here's an example of two unit tests we're going to write. We should test every logical path the program can take. So in our get product service, there are two outcomes. We either find the product and return a DTO, or we throw a new product not found exception. So in this case, we would write two unit tests. To do this, we'll need to create a new test class. We'll have to do some setup, so we're going to use a bunch of new annotations. At mock, this is going to mock the response from the repository. At inject mocks, this is what we annotate the service class that we are testing. The before each annotation will annotate our setup method, which is how we do a test setup. So basically, we need to instantiate the mock objects. And then finally, we'll have the at test annotation for each test that we write. OK, let's get started. If you look in your project, you'll notice a test folder. And in that test folder, there's already one class. In that class, there is a context load annotated with at test. So this is the default test that's included in the project. This is known as a sanity check, or in other words, a test that should always pass. Basically, you're making sure there's no weird bug or compile issue. So if I click this green button and then click run, It'll run the test and give you a green check mark. OK, in the same folder, we're going to create a new class and name it Get Product Service Test. First, we need to use the at mock annotation, and it is going to annotate private product repository, product repository. You use the at mock annotation when you want to mock the response of something. This is the dependency that we need to run the test. Then we use the annotation at inject mocks for private get product service, get product service. This annotates the class we're actually testing. Then we use the before each annotation, public void setup. And this annotates the method that runs before each test is started. We then call mockito annotations.openmocks and we pass in this. And essentially, this initializes the repository and the service class. OK, now we're ready to write our test. So we use at test annotation, public void all tests return void. And then we're going to write our given when then. So given product exists, when get product service returns product DTO. We have three parts of our test, given, when, and then. So first, create a new product, product product equals new product, and then set the parameters. And then we're going to use the when method, product repository dot find by ID of one, then return optional of product. This essentially stubs the product repository so that for the duration of this test, it returns what we're telling it to return. I know it's really confusing because it says when, but this is actually technically still part of the given. 
getProductService.execute, and we pass in 1. And we want to capture the response. So response entity of product ETO, response is equal to this. Lastly, we have our then, which is an assertion. So assert equals response entity dot OK of new product ETO. This is the expected. And then we pass in the actual response, response. Another verification you can do is verify product repository comma times one. This asserts that the product repository was only called once. This is more commonly used when you have really complex operations. Okay, when you're done, come up here and click Run. And you should see a nice green check mark. Okay, let's write our second test. At test, public void, given product does not exist, when get product service, throw product not found exception. We have a given, and this time the when and then are the same thing. So again, we're going to stub our product repository, but this time we're going to return an optional .empty. Then we assert throws product not found exception dot class, and then we say get product service dot execute. So this executes the get product service method and catches the exception and asserts that it was caught. Then again, we can verify that the product repository was only invoked one time. When you're done, go ahead and click Run, and you should see a green check mark. Couple other things to note, you can run all of the tests in a class all at once by coming up here and clicking this green button. Or you can come to the folder right click and click run, and it runs everything in the folder. And this time it ran three tests because it also ran your sanity check. Or you can come to the terminal and do a Maven test. And you can see all three tests ran and passed. So you have multiple options for running your tests depending on your project setup. Okay, here are some final thoughts. So every workflow is different. My work requires unit tests for every piece of code, and the unit tests are part of the work itself. So you don't write an extra task, you don't write an extra ticket for unit tests, it's just required. Some workplaces, though, they don't require you to write unit tests. Some require you to run all of your unit tests locally before you push any code. Some have a continuous integration pipeline, which basically means every time you push your code, it runs all of the unit tests in the cloud. So when you start a new job, just ask what the standard is. Here's my challenge for you. Go back and write unit tests for each service that we've created and the validator class, and use ChatGPT to help you. Okay, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.